Trap drums. What's up dogs, it's Cameron with Venus Theory, and today we're here to talk about creating trap style drums in Cubase. So, this is something that I kind of wanted to get into and explore more of the kind of trappier influences in my own sound, and uh, it's something I was never really any good at. So I spent the last few weeks kind of learning some things and kind of trying to approach things in a different way and uh, kind of picked up a lot of tricks. So I figured I would share uh, what I've learned over the past couple of weeks with you guys. And to some of you, this may be old news that you've known for years, but to me, this was new information, which is always great. Um, and just kind of a new process I hadn't thought of that made my life a lot easier. So if you're a fellow Cubase user, I hope this helps you because it sure did help me to learn all this. And, um, you know, if you use another DAW, a lot of this stuff still applies because most DAWs include some kind of sampler utility thing. So without further ado, let's dive into Cubase and get started. All right, guys, so we're here in Cubase and we're ready to start talking about creating trap drums using Cubase's sampler track. So this is something I've been kind of after for a while, and there are different ways of doing uh, what I'm about to show you, um, specifically using stuff like Groove Agent or pitch shifting plugins and things like that. But um, this sampler track is something I kind of overlooked and didn't really think about until I was talking with my pal Infamous. And uh, he was, you know, we were talking about drums and stuff and... You know, I really like the sound of his drums, so I kind of dug into that trap style a bit more and found that Sampler Track is incredibly useful for this. So what Sampler Track is, is it's pretty much self-described. It's a track that acts as a sampler, so then you can play stuff across the keyboard. So this little blue key indicates the normal pitch. So with drums, C3 plays it back at the exact same pitch. You'll want to enable one-shot mode. This means it'll play the entire sample. And away you go. You can also do cool stuff like reversing things or really messing stuff up. So like this crash, for instance, uh, we could use the pitch here to turn it way down, uh, turn on a filter, add like resonance and drive. We could use the audio warp function, uh, adjust the speed and formance and play it at a really low key and get a really cool like crashy pad thing almost acts as like an impact in a way so that's something to keep in mind when you play with sampler track is try out different stuff because you know it's pretty capable of a lot of really interesting things so um the last thing is you want to make sure you set the tuning so as i mentioned this blue key indicates where this sample that's the pitch so with stuff like this 808 i know this 808 is at a1 I just know it needs tuned up slightly to match the pitch of what I'm doing, so I tuned it up using the fine tune, used the filter to add a bit of distortion, and away we went. So using Sampler Track, I created this. So that sounded pretty cool and I was super happy with it. So one thing I wanted to talk about um, further to this trap style is a couple things I've learned recently. So one of the big things, like I mentioned, is, you know, sampler track allows you to play with pitch. So by moving this snare sample around, I'm able to get those pitched snare rolls, um, which is something I was always kind of like into but kind of hated but kind of wanted to be able to do and doing that in groove agent was kind of a giant pain because i had to map a sample across a specific set of keys and you know it doesn't quite give me the range that sampler track does because i could move this snare all the way up to c6 and get something ridiculous or all the way down to c1 you know and like with groove agent i may be limited to like three or four semitones meaning you know, very slight variations in pitch. But by using sampler track and splitting up the samples, so the kick is one, snare is one, hat is one, so on and so forth, it allows me to really start messing with things. So what I did is I just programmed in a quick snare pattern, uh, added in snare rolls, did some velocity changes, um, nothing you probably haven't seen before. So now the snare sounds like this. So, you know, like, let's say this thing, I kind of want this to descend maybe. Now we get this cool like pitch bend snare roll thing. And then, you know, after layering that in with a clap, I get these really nice trappy sounding drums. 
So another thing I wanted to talk about is automating stuff using Sampler Track, and this is really, really fun. So um, I could write automation here. I could open this up and write some panning automation. So I could just go in here and I could open up the lane and we could start maybe panning this around. So we want to start it over here. We could set this to be quantize mode. We want this roll to kind of go up to the right and then the hats go back down and then maybe to the center for a minute. And then here we could just do some quick kind of like super hard panning. So we could do like that and then it switches back over here. And then at this one, it's going to go back to the center. And that allows me to get some really interesting kind of movements in the hats. And I found that this is really helpful. It's like just kind of very slightly panning out the hats over time. And then, you know, on a couple of them, like let's say these ones, just panning them out like hard left. And then we could do hard right. Or, well, you know, right then left. Anyways, you know, something like that. And then we could just kind of like pan these up a little more and pan them down pretty hard at the end. So now we get this hi-hat pattern that kind of moves around your head. Another thing I picked up that I haven't really thought of doing, I mean, I, I've done it in the past, but it, it's not really something that really stuck with me, is using stuff like a phaser or a chorus on your hats and just kind of like a low rate and like a medium depth. Adds a really interesting effect. And just, again, a little bit of movement. One other thing is haws panning. Um, so this is pretty easy to do. So if you didn't have a plugin capable of doing this, what you could do is duplicate this track, and then we could delay the signal by like 15 milliseconds and just, you know, let it do that. But then we could kind of pan these two out like so, and that would create kind of a stereo effect, which I will show you here. You can get rid of this. So another way of achieving the same result, but... You know, this is something that was really cool once I kind of sat down and really thought about how to do this stuff. Another cool thing is, you know, using the sampler track, you can also use your keyboard controller to do like pitch bends and stuff using the pitch bend wheel, which is really, really nice. And, you know, there are so many other things that this opened up for me. And I know this might be kind of a stupid video and it may be very obvious to some of you. I just wanted to show this because this is a really classic example of me way overthinking something without using the tools that are right in front of me. And, you know, after doing this for a little bit and kind of getting more used to like trappy drum patterns and stuff like that, you know, I've, I've kind of in the span of a week gone from like, I, I'm not really super comfortable with trap to now like I totally get it and I can do it no problem. So anyways, that's kind of an overview of sampler track. And this is definitely something to check out if you have Cubase and you have Cubase 9 or above, I believe, is where it's included from, although I may be wrong on that. But anyways, so that's just all I wanted to show you guys. And that's it for this video, guys. So thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. As always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon. Thank you.